Hey everyone, today I wanna to show you guys my new plug and play balcony solar setup right here on my deck. Now this setup didn't require any permits or approvals from the power company. It's as simple as installing the solar panels, plugging them into a micro inverter, and then connecting them to an existing outlet. It's plug and play, it's super simple, and it's legal now here in Utah where I live because of a new law that passed HB 340. The heart of this setup is the EcoFlow Stream 1200 watt micro inverter. I've got 750 watts of solar panels connected to the DC side, and then the inverter converts that power to grid synchronized AC electricity that feeds straight into a standard 120 volt outlet. Now to give you guys an overview of the setup, I'm here on the patio. I'm using six of these EcoFlow 125 watt bifacial solar panels. They're simply strapped to the railing. They're connected together in parallel daisy chained as they are designed to do so. And the DC output goes down underneath the deck. So the DC power for this setup is routed underneath the deck into this PV disconnect. And then that goes into the DC input on the micro inverter. As the power is converted to AC power, it comes out of the micro inverter and into the 120 volt dedicated outlet. Now, what I love about this setup is that it uses the EcoFlow smart app so you can access this system remotely anytime you want to see what's going on. Right now, I'm back feeding about 430 watts into the grid, offsetting the loads in my house. Now, if we look at the screen of my smart meter, you can see that we are offsetting the load. We are showing zero power right now being used by my house. And that's the whole purpose of this setup. You wanna offset your power usage. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what's the big deal? This is basically grid tie solar, and that's been around for a long time. And you're right, but there's one key difference with this setup. Here in Utah, where I live this last year, they passed House Bill 340, which allows me to use up to a 1200 watt grid tie system. As long as it's UL listed and installed properly, I can backfeed 1200 watts into the grid without any permits or approval. I'm not on a net metering plan. I can essentially use this device to offset the power usage of my house, which is pretty cool because it's usually around 400 to 500 watts. So during the day, I can use this to offset that power usage completely. At the time of filming this video, Utah is currently the only state that I know of where you can have a microinverter backfeed to the grid without permits and approvals. But I will say the devices are getting a bit smarter, and so they work differently than the EcoFlow microinverter. The benefit to the EcoFlow microinverter is that it's so affordable. It's only $300, it's simple, so anybody in Utah can purchase this and start offsetting their power bill right away, and the return on investment is pretty quick. But what about everyone that lives outside of Utah? in the United States. Well, there are products that have been recently released and that are coming out soon that have some sort of smart shunt on the main power wires of your house. And so what happens here is that device senses the amount of power that your house is using and it offsets that load. So it tries to zero out your power meter, but it does not send power to the grid. So your power company won't even know you're using a device like that, yet you can drop down your power bill. The problem with those devices is that they are a bit more expensive than the EcoFlow microinverter. Now I was thinking about this, one thing that would be really cool is if EcoFlow released an additional device that communicated to this, some sort of smart shunt that connected to the main power wires for your main breaker box. So it'd be able to tell how much power you're using or consuming in your house and then communicated to this. And then this basically offset that load up to a certain amount. That would make this microinverter legal in all 50 states because it would essentially just offset the usage in your house. It wouldn't you know, push back to the grid. That would be really cool. Maybe they're already working on something like that, but I haven't heard anything about that. Now, for anybody that's living in Utah that wants to take advantage of the new law using this microinverter, there are a few things that I wanna clarify first. First off, you do need to have a smart meter installed. A smart meter can tell which direction the power is flowing, whether you're producing or whether you're consuming power. Now, a digital meter, a standard digital meter does not have the ability to do that. So if you have a standard digital meter and you're using this device, anytime you produce power, it will actually show up as additional power consumption. So your bill is gonna go up. So you wanna make sure that you do not use a microinverter like this with a digital meter. You wanna make sure you have a smart meter installed. So reach out to Rocky Mountain Power. Most people in Utah are gonna have Rocky Mountain Power ask them for a smart meter to be installed. Once you have it installed, you can start using this device. Now, I will say, once I started using the device, I did have a representative from Rocky Mountain Power show up to my house because my power account got a red flag because I was backfeeding. So they wanted to see what was going on. Now, I came to the backyard, showed them this setup, talked about HB 340, 
and they put a stamp on my account showing that um, it's okay. I was basically following the law using the proper device and I am allowed to, you know, use this device now. So I'm guessing that most people in Utah that start using one of these, they're going to get that red flag on their account until someone comes out and verifies that, you know, they're using the proper setup. Maybe that'll change in the future, but that's just what's happening right now. Now, I also want to clarify that I am not part of the net metering program. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I cannot roll back my power meter, so I can't reduce my previous consumption, and I also don't get credits. All this unit does is it zeroes out my power meter if I have less power being used in my house than what it's producing. So zero throughout the day when my base load is around 400 to 500 watts. That's great. That's excellent. It reduces my power bill. But if I happen to use a device that goes over that certain amount, my power bill will start going up. Now, I know some of you are curious if this actually works. So I pulled up some power consumption from a few days ago, and you can see right here in the middle, I was able to offset my bill completely for a few hours. Now, this is a worst case scenario because this was right near winter solstice, which is the shortest solar day of the year. So I'd only expect this to get better as these solar hours increased throughout the day. So during the summer, you could definitely max this out. Now, I also want to clarify that you are not limited to using just EcoFlow solar panels for their stream microinverter. I just decided to use these because after looking at the specifications and sizing, you can see that it fits this railing perfectly and it actually looks pretty decent, but you can use any solar panel as long as it fits the solar specifications for the stream microinverter. Now I want to take a second to break down the specifications for each of the solar connections. There are three charge controllers in this device. So this pair right here is good for 450 watts. This end pair is good for 450 watts. And then these two pairs in the middle are actually paralleled together for a total of 450 watts. So you can actually connect up three 450 watt panels to this, and then it'll output a maximum of 1200 watts into the grid. Now I'm definitely not using that to the maximum ability. I only have 750 watts connected up to these two here. Now for the starting voltage, your solar panels need at least 20 volts and they can go up to 60 volts, which makes this perfect for the 400 to 500 watt class solar panels connected up to each one of these ports. So using three 400 watt panels with the stream microinverter would be an excellent setup. For example, right here, I have a 1200 watt array using three 400 watt residential panels. All you'd need to do is connect up each one of these panels directly to the MC4 connections on the stream microinverter and you'd be good to go. Now, one other super interesting experiment that I tried briefly was connecting a 48 volt battery up to all of these ports in parallel. Now it did work. I was able to get 1200 watts output from the microinverter into the grid. Now just imagine if you had a large enough 48 volt battery where you could backfeed 1200 watts throughout the entire day and night. That would be super awesome. So let me know if you guys want to see that experiment. Now fast forward a couple hours and you can see that we are completely in the shade. Uh, we have a little bit of sun left on this array and that's just the downside of winter solar. Luckily we did pass winter solstice just a few days ago. So now the days are getting longer. So we're gonna get more solar power moving forward. Now, I was really excited to install this system and see how it worked. You can see that it is a very basic system. So if you're in Utah, you can use this type of system legally. I'll include the link to the EcoFlow microinverter down in the video description. But I'm really looking forward to the future systems that are gonna be coming out that should be legal for all 50 states. So you guys will have to let me know what you think about that. Make sure you leave a comment down below in the comment section. Just a short video today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to CES next week, so make sure you keep an eye out for that video. Until then, we'll see you guys next time.